Hello, today I would like to talk about array filtering. During this speech I would like to discuss a few ways how it can be made. In the beginning I will start how the array can be filtered using the for loop. After that I would like to discuss how the array can be filtered using JavaScript uh, filter function. And then I would like to discuss how it can be even enhanced and made better. So let's get started. So in order to filter an array, we actually need an array. Let's call it an input. And let's just let this array be filled with some random numbers. And let's imagine that for some reason we would like to filter this array. By filtering I mean it's to produce another array that would contain the value of the input array where they are greater than four, for example. So let's get started. So in this case we have to declare the filtered array. Let f array would be an empty one. And then using a simple for loop we can iterate through all this uh, from all the indexes of the input array. And then we can check every value of an input array. And in case if it satisfies the condition, in our case is greater than 3, then we will add it to a newly filtered array. So let's try it. So if input at index i is greater than 3, in this case filtered array, let's push it and let's add the push the value from the input array. And in order to show that everything worked perfectly fine, we can actually output a filtered array. Let's take a look how it is. Actually performed. So, yep, all these numbers are greater than 4, and we have filtered out number 3. That is the only one that is less than, actually less or equal to 3. Let's actually add a few more values to, so we can filter out more. I have added 1 and 2. And three, and we can see that they actually were not taken into account. So we can see it's great, it works. So yeah. So let's take a look how it can be made more convenient and then using the more modern way. So let's do this. The more modern way would be actually to use a JavaScript function a method called filter. How does it work? So the filter function, it's a, it's a method, let's call it like this, of the any JavaScript array. And as an input, the filter method is actually taking another function. So let's declare it and then we'll see how it works. In this case, I will use a arrow function notation. And uh, as an input, this function takes a value that will be actually each one of these ones. And in case if this function returns true, then this value will be left within the filtered array. In case if it will be false, it will be left out. So let's do the following. In this case, let's just return true for all of them. And then let's just output the value that is being passed to this array. And let's just let f array equals, and let's log f array. So let's see what this program will do. Let's run it. So we can see that it, it outputted all the values one by one in the same order as it is here, because it's passed as a value. And then because our function returns true in all cases, then the result array that we can see here, it's exactly the same as the one here. So let's see what will happen in case if this function would return false. So in this case, we will get a completely empty array, because for every value, we have returned false. So it's not really interesting, it's not really filtering, it kind of looks more like a blocking. 
So in this case, let's just write a logic that we have defined previously that would be greater than three. So in case if, uh, if let's write it more explicit, value greater than three, then return true in else return false by false. So let's see. Perfect. In this case, we are getting a new filtered array where every number is greater than three from this array. Perfect. Let's make it a little bit shorter because it's kind of much noise. Yeah, let's do this. So the result is exactly the same. So I'll leave it like this. So we can see that uh, uh, the way how it's implemented currently, it's much shorter and much more elegant than it was before. But there is a problem with this. First of all, uh, we can see that uh, this one just filters everything out of three. And let's imagine that the user would like to input this value maybe through the text input or maybe this wire, uh, if this value arrives from the, through the wire. So in this case, it should be a variable. So how can it be made? So we can create a new variable that would be outside before the filter function. And then would be, let's call it is greater. And let it be and we can pause here. So then let's actually change it to, for example, 30. So let's take a look what we're getting. Sure, and as a result, we're getting a new array that is actually consists of the values greater than 30, and uh, which is included in here. All the values which are less than 30 actually dropped. So perfect, amazing, but there is something wrong with this. First of all, because this is really a simple example, we can easily read this code and we can understand what is it. And because it's so simple, maybe we can even not to do any testing about it because it's kind of really obvious. Another thing that I don't really like about it is the fact that this function is really dependent on some variable that is passed from the outside, not as a param, but as kind of a closure. So in this case, it's really hard to test this function independently, and uh, it's actually not really convenient. So let's try to make it a little bit better. To improve it better, I really would like to touch a really a little bit complicated topic called high order functions. So what is high order function? High order function it's actually a function that takes a function as a param. Actually, the filter function is a high order function, or it actually returns a function. So in this case, let's do the following. Let's declare a new function that will be called same as this variable. Oh, must is greater than as an input. This function will take a test uh, a value. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result, this function will just return a function. Sorry, it might be a little bit con confusing. Uh, that would take some value. Later, this value will be, say, use uh, this one. And then it would perform the comparison. It would return same test value greater than value. Brilliant. So let's comment this part out for a moment and let's just see how it works. We can create, a, let's create a variable t that would be equals to is greater than, for example, seven. And what this uh, function can perform, it can actually return true or false in case of something is compared to 7. In this case, let's do the following console 
dot log t and uh, let it be nine. So let's see what let's comment this one out as well. And let's see how it will work. It returns true. So let's pass the value five. In this case, what happens? It returns false because in this case uh, five is small, uh, less than seven. So, and now let's try to do the following. So let's slightly rewrite this our filter function, and let's pass is greater than five. So in this case, what can we see that? The filter function as a parameter is taking a product of this function, a result of this function, that is actually a function that will be performing the test in case a value passed in is greater than 5. And if it sounds a little bit confusing, but let's try to run it. And we can see that as a result we are getting the array that consists of the following values where actually every value is greater than 5. And what's interesting that if we'll take a look at under this line, we can see that it looks actually quite elegant, that it produces a filtered array based on the input filtered by the value that is greater than 5. I found that this way of filtering is actually quite elegant, quite nice, but in the beginning a little bit confusing. Next time, I really would like to go uh, one step further, and I would like to talk about functions negations and function composition. And maybe later I will also touch topics like uh, reduce, and definitely mapping. Mapping is a simple one. Okay, thank you very much, and see you next time. Bye.